The views expressed by the host documented to be almost always right. 99.8% of the time. White men are the huge reason for the decline in NFL interest, according to the latest poll. And this makes sense. White men were their audience, were their base. And the NFL has ignored their base and angered them. We see it in politics all the time, do we not? Declining interest in the NFL has been a closely covered topic throughout last season, but an NBC News Wall Street Journal poll delved into the demographics behind the drop, and it found that white people, specifically white men, are the biggest culprits. Note that the word culprit is used to describe white men refusing to watch the NFL. Culprits. What are the overall numbers? The number of people overall who say they follow the NFL has declined sharply since 2014. The poll last month showed that 49% of responders indicated they closely follow the league, but that figure was 58% in January 2014. So it's gone down basically nine points. That's not insignificant. Because among whites, the figure is down 12 points, 59% in 2014 to 47% in 2018. So NBC News, in reporting their poll, says, so in a sense, the NFL's viewership popularity problems seem to boil down to a problem with white men. Uh, I know what they mean, but that's not the way to write this. White men are not the problem. The NFL has the problem, and white men are determining, uh, some of them, that the NFL is no longer what it once was. But this is clever journalism. You see how this is written? This is NBC News reporting on their own poll. So in a sense, the NFL's viewership popularity problem seems to boil down to a problem with white men. Now, you might think I'm being overly analytical. No, folks, you have to put this in context. Are there not stories each and every day? The problems in American culture can be traced back to white men. This is just the latest example. Subset of white men is white Christians. And then a further subset is male and female white Christians. But, I mean, they are the targets. They are the focus. Whenever there is criticism of intolerance. So what they really trying to say here, what they want their readers to conclude is that white men who used to love the NFL no longer watching it because they're a bunch of intolerant bigots who are not willing to accept the modern evolution of the culture of the NFL. And so we have an entity that is losing its audience and the problem is the audience. And the audience is intolerant. Now, does that not fit with a consistent portrayal of white men, white women, white Christians that we have been treated to for the last seven or eight years intensely? White men are huge reason for decline in NFL interest, is the headline. Okay, I can make a case that the headline's accurate. I can make a case the headline is not trying to play games. NFL's audience decline traced to lagging interest in white men. At least the problem would be pegged to the NFL right now. This whole story is blaming white men, blaming the audience, blaming the customer. And so this is written in such a way that it isn't going it, to, it's not going to result in anything getting fixed because the NFL is going to be assured that it's not the problem, that its problem is its audience. And I'll tell you the next thing to come. The next thing to come, mark my words on this. The next thing to happen is, and I don't know if it'll ever be stated publicly. The next thing to happen is 
that somebody will say, well, this had to happen sometime. The NFL's got to stay young. It has to stay hip. If it's to have a future, it cannot rely on its old audience base of white men. And so this is ultimately going to be portrayed as the NFL making a brilliant marketing move by angering its number one fan base. It won't be long before some drive-by sports liberal gloms on to that angle and, and credits the NFL for really being brilliant in its foresight why the NFL knew all along what it was doing allowing those protests. It was getting rid of the audience that nobody wants anymore. You wait, you're going to see stories like that. It isn't going to be long. This is the first one. Uh, Drew in uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. Great to have you, sir. How are you doing? Great, Russ. Uh, Bayou Bengal dittos. Um, this assertion that there's some sort of racial component to explain the drop in the NFL popularity if there is a racial component, how does that person explain the popularity of SEC football? The most conservative white males in the U.S. or in the South, and yet SEC football, ACC football, Texas football, uh, those stadiums pack 100,000 fans. CBS pays the SEC millions for a weekly game. And there are a high percentage of SEC football players who are African American. So this racial component excuse in the NFL is is ludicrous because uh, how do you explain the popularity of SEC football? It's it's ridiculous. And Rush, if you've never made a night game at Tiger Stadium at LSU against an Alabama or, foot, or Georgia, you need to do it because it'll change your life. Is that right? Oh, uh, it you will you will flip from the NFL to college in a heartbeat. And we want you on our team. So come on down to Tiger Stadium against the Alabama. Well, that's Auburn awfully good. I, I appreciate it. I've, I've been to one nighttime college. Well, I've been to a couple of Nebraska night games, but I was sitting in the in the corporate skybox up there. Rush. Uh, far, well, yeah. no, hey, I was invited. What am I going to do? But I, I, there, I, was, I have been to one nighttime college football game in the stands when I was a kid. It was Mizzou, Arkansas. Now, I know that's nothing like Alabama LSU, but at the time, it was big. And I'm well, telling you, Mizzou won that night, and our hosts, my dad was a lawyer, had some clients down in Little Rock, who invited, they were in tears at the end of the game. They were crying. They were trying not to cry. They were trying to show us how tough. They congratulated us on the win, but they were crying. They were, And it was, it was I remember enough about the atmosphere to know what you're talking about. Well, but Tiger Stadium is different, and I think everybody will say that. So make it down to Tiger Stadium for a night game, and I'm telling you, there's nothing like it. Well, how do you even get in? I can't imagine anybody. I mean, the students don't even get very many tickets to these games, right? Oh, you... no, the students have probably about 10,000, and they get there early. And uh, you can tell it's a big game because the aroma of bourbon kind of wafts across the field about an hour before kickoff. So then you know it's a really big game. An aroma. Aroma of bourbon. There is... <laughs> there, there, there's, there's enough that you can detect the aroma. Well, uh, that's what they say. And uh, it gets pretty wild there. In, in a night game against a big opponent, if you... If you oh, I can... I can... Cook and, and all those other people say it's the most unbelievable atmosphere in, in sports, and you need to make the game. All right. Well, I'll put it on the bucket list. I appreciate it. I, I want to explain to people that may not have heard what you're reacting to. Uh, there is an NBC, New Wall, NBC News Wall Street Journal poll today pointing out the NFL's rating problems are really not the NFL's. The number one demographic the NFL has lost is white men. And they're called culprits in this story, and they are blamed. The NFL is not cited as the reason white men are watching less of the NFL. White men are watching less. It doesn't say this, but you can't help but infer it, that white men have become a bunch of intolerant bigots. And it's related to the kneels, the kneel down, taking a knee, protesting the anthem and the flag. And it is clearly 
This story in the poll is clearly meant to identify white men as being intolerant of that. And that's why they're watching the NFL less. But the way the story is written and the way the poll is reported, it's not reported as a problem for the NFL. It's not the NFL's fault. It's that demographic. And this word is not used. You have to know how to read these stories, folks, to understand the impact on your average low-information voter reading this stuff. The average low-information voter is going to think that the problem the NFL has is a bunch of intolerant old white guys who refuse to modernize and tolerate behavior and beliefs that are different from their own. And if I'm right, it won't be long before we see some stories praising the NFL for not buckling to the pressure from these aging white guys, because the NFL's future is not them. The NFL's future is the young demographic made up with the rapper industry and so forth. And the NFL knew that it was going to take it on the chin for a couple of years, but they had to make this transition. And they're going to be praised for not responding to the complaints of that demographic. And when that series of stories happens, that's when you will know that my interpretation of this is right. I mean, you don't have to wait for that. You can trust me now. But that'll prove it to you when it happens.